Right, so I've got the instrument at the headstock end now and uh, I'm using the side of the carriage as my uh, marker and as you can see the bubble is towards us which is irritating because it means me having to fiddle around behind the motor I don't know if this is going to fit longitudinally, yes it is let's just get an initial reading longitudinally okay it's up at the tailstock end which is a good sign on that bedway and on the rear bedway also up at the headstock end which is testament to how much I've had to crank it uh, in that initial setting right so what I will now proceed to do is get my head all the way back around here and this is not an Right, so I've had a little break, I've had a biscuit and I've had um, a bit of an idea and my idea, in the time that I was having my biscuit, I was thinking about what I'm doing here, and it occurred to me that this cranking down of the um, socket cap screws is initially going to take up a degree of preload or in introduce a degree of preload into the underlying cabinet. Um, before any effect is really going to be felt. And that got me thinking that maybe I'm being too generous in slacking off my bolts or nuts. So I'm going to refasten the nut ever so slightly while studying that bubble in as much as I can see something from across such a distance. Okay, from about now, if I can keep my hand on there whilst studying that bubble, see if it has any effect as I just take up the spring in the metal. Yes. Yes, it's moving. Huh. Okay. When in doubt, stop and have a biscuit. Right. So I'm back to the uh, rear adjuster here. Look at that. Straight away we get a result. A massive result out of about one sixth of a turn. One sixth of a turn of the, uh, of the screw. A little bit more. Let it settle. A bit more. In fact, I'm going to let it go past and then pull it back with the front one. So I crank the front one up ever so slightly. Should be seeing an effect now because I can feel it working against the metal. Right. That's about it. Okay, so the initial front to back settings are actually much easier than I've ever achieved them before. Uh, and it's partly because I'm actually working against metal that's tight like a drum skin rather than all floppy, uh, if you think about the condition of this uh, base plate. I'm going to turn it longitudinally now. The only problem is that this. There's a bunch of dried crud in the corner. I have a brush. Where's that brush? So, in England we've got uh, shops called Pound Shop. 
and their, their great competitor, the 99p shop. And I love scouring these shops uh, for badly named horological tooling. And one thing uh, I love buying from them is uh, these kind of, they, they often sell various types of brush. So I think this is designed for cleaning the dishes in the kitchen. But when you can buy a bunch of brushes for say, three for a pound or something, I'd much rather uh, spend my money. You know, because the brushes like this are always sacrificial, they always get disgusting and messed up. And if you buy proper brushes, say from the tool shops, they're bloody expensive. Anyway, not that I'm shy of spending money on tools, but I also do take a certain perverse pleasure shopping for workshop equipment in the, in the pound shop. Right. Right, so from your new position at the edge of the uh, milling machine there, you don't have to just take an overview of what's going on. I think that's better than uh, a close-up view with the camera upside down and all sorts of uh, weird angles making people feel seasick. Right, I would say that is as near as damn it, exactly level front to back. And in theory we should have raised this level also. Yeah, not much. Less than half a division uh, is the correction that I've just made. And that's about the same. I don't know if we're going to get it much better, I have to say. Because I'm really cranking these screws really tightly, I, I, I don't really want to tighten them anymore. Over here, it's about it's about one division low towards the rear. And a very slow float up to the left by about four spaces worth from centre, which means that we're about two thou. That one's actually a bit less. I think I might uh, I might call that done. Slightly high at the back now. The slightest touch makes all the difference. So the thing to do now is to leave it overnight. Come back tomorrow morning and see what it's done. So we are now reading two ticks high on the on the headstock end, and on the rear way we have. Settling very slowly, two ticks high on the headstock end also. And at the headstock we have in the front way just over four ticks high at this end. And on the rear way just over two ticks high. So what we have is a geometrically flat plane here, very level with the, with the, with the planet. Um, marginally higher on the front one, but I don't think I'm going to do anything about that, because also, you consider what that represents. Uh, we've got a measurement say 26 inches a 
and we've got a thou per division per 10 inches. Okay, so what that means is that on the front we've got two and a half divisions greater at this end than at this end, which tells us that we've gone two and a half divisions in 26 inches. Okay, so that's about one division in 10. So we, we're talking about an inaccuracy of, of, of possible taper turning or lack of parallelism in the, in the carriage movement by about a thou in 10 inches, which I think is fine. I think that is absolutely perfect. So what we've got there is a really square on view of that bubble nicely centered between the, uh, the divisions. It could be marginally up on the uh, on the front edge. If I turn it across, see. I don't know how the lighting is going to behave. That's better. So we can see. talking about two-ish divisions up on the left and if I work on the rear way see how slowly that bubble moves and it's drifted up to just marginally over two divisions up on the left. That's slightly higher on the left. If we go now to this end, let's move this light. You can see that it is marginally high on the front edge by well, less than a full division if you consider the meniscus of that bubble. Longitudinally, we are up. If you look at the left edge of the bubble, subject. About two and a half spaces, two and a half divisions. And the rear one, I think you'd have to take my word for it because it's very difficult to see with the eye and I suspect that with the camera it's going to be nearly impossible. Even that this camera's focus is pence. There we are. You can see it riding high on the left. And I can confirm visually that that's about two divisions. Well, it's a higher, no. It's right on the edge of the last division, which is three. There's one division higher than on the tailstock end. So all in all, the machine riding about one thou high in 10 inches at the headstock end. Everything's nicely cranked down, I know that, because I could feel absolute resistance. Um, I mean, I've really maxed out the uh, preload on those screws. So really, what remains to be done is to revisit it tomorrow, and I will also put my test bar in with a dial test indicator, and I may cut a test piece, you know, two collars, and see how the, uh, the difference in diameter um, is affected by any errors in the bed. 
So see you then.